Uh, good morning, Harry. Good morning. Is anybody on there? Mm -hmm. So I can't listen there for now. Because she's not talking. Huh. Okay. Uh, good morning, Harvey. Morning. Say my name is Howard. I know your name is Harry. Yep, I guess no one's on yet. Not yet. I I know they're running late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they either run late or they run early. So, <laughs> what could I tell you? Now today's Thursday, so the darling is longer. Well. I did the DAF last night at seven seven thirty eight o'clock last night. So you DAF? So I did it from uh, Staten Island. Actually, uh, Rabbi uh, Rabbi Weiss. I went on his Zoom. Yeah. So so I'm ahead of the game. Funny at, at BRS uh, the caller. So Rabbi Weiss was there. Right. On Monday. Yeah, I met him in uh, in the, in one of the the bagel store, and then he gave me his his Zoom number, and I go, oh, good, I'll go on at eight o'clock at night. If you Google him, he's on uh, online. You can do it every day. He, I know. He, he told me he told me eight o'clock at night and it was seven o'clock. Right. I used to do the doff with him in Staten Island. So, you know. till, till I saw him in BRS, listen to him, his class, I didn't know about him. Well, he, he, he doesn't take any, uh, any comments from other people. <laughs> he no. just says point blank. Hey, that's it. I'm talking. That's it. Move on. Very interesting lecture. I mean, he is interesting. He is extremely interesting. I, I don't know if you heard him in Staten Island. He was talking about names. Uh, the, every name has some meaning. I mean, he found very interesting meanings with, through gematria. Hold on. Okay, good. Yes. It's unusually late. I don't know if they're going to have it or not. Well, I don't know. Maybe Bob is uh, didn't, didn't show up. You know, the one who normally brings in his... Uh... I know, it happened before. That he wasn't. It depends who's doing it. If uh, Rabbi Green is doing it, so he, he can do it himself. Right. If there's anybody else, then 
I'm in trouble. <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I have online the, uh, the Gemora. I have Corin online, so I can do it. Right. Yeah, you always have the DAF online somewhere. I can do it online also, but I, I can also read it. I have the text. <coughs> well, last Rabbi, night, uh, yeah, Rabbi is, Weiss was uh, half, uh, here he is. Gentlemen, if Rabbi you Green. could it, it would be appreciated. Okay. All right, thank you and welcome this morning. Okay. Today is the uh, 12th. And uh, we start with our learning sponsors. A year of learning, friends of Marcy Kurtz, in memory of her great niece, Leah Bracha, Isaac and Evelyn Blachel, in memory of his sister, Chaya Rachel Bas Isser, friends of Leonie Meiserman, Leah Saber Bas Chanuk Sundu. Two months of learning by the friends of Milton Meller, in honor of his second bar mitzvah. A month of learning by Rabbi Dr. Yankee and Malki Honig, in memory of his sister, Chava Bas Arav Simcha Ben Yaman. His brother Tzviar and Zeb ben Arab Simcha ben Yaman, his father Arab Simcha ben Yaman ben Arab Yosef Yitzchak, her mother Sotzer Be pies in memory of his sister Rivka Bas Avram Michal Halevi, Mindel and David Cheslo in memory of her father Nechemia ben Mordechai Yona Halevi, Haran and Mel Haller in memory of her mother Malka Rachel Bas Yehuda Leib, Yossi Goldstein in memory of his father Moshe Tzvi ben Do. A week of learning by Clara and Jonas Wazer, in memory of her father, Moshe ben Yisrael HaKohen, Mira and Herschel Senet, in memory of her mother, Shosha Bar Avraham Alevi, and his mother, Reitzah Bas Yitzchak Yaakov, Anita and Morris Kornblut, Lior and Lee Weinberg, in memory of their dear friend and teacher, Rabbi Dr. Mran Brana, Harav Yerachmiel ben Shmuel Yosef. Today, we do not have any individual Therefore, Ben Meshama have Ben Meshama is having Aliyah, Crank Rafiel, Velka Yeshua Shema Tliyah, Rachel Ben Israel, good to be. Okay. All right, gentlemen online, you can hear it. All right. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We are uh, going to start back on a moment on the top of Ayin Tet, Amud Aleph, right? Okay, so we were still dealing with this question from the very bottom of the previous Amud. Okay, Meitiv Rav Chista, Rav Chista challenged. Chomer Behekeim Mehafer, the fact that we talked about stringency in regarding the confirmation, because we remember we said that it was, when one was silent, it's understood as confirmation, implicit confirmation, right? Mi Behefer, rather than vis a vis the revocation. But regarding revocation, vis-a-vis -vis confirmation, the stringency of confirmation, we say, that was the top of I and Tet. But we said it was silence. That is considered an implicit, again, confirmation. But silence does not revoke or do away with the the uh, nether. Okay, so what happens? We're continuing there on the top of I intent. Kiembelibo, if he basically confirmed the vow, the nether in his heart, in other words, without saying a specific oral statement, right? Kiem, we consider that to be a valid confirmation. Okay, have fair belibo. If he basically revoked in his heart, a no more fair. That's not considered a valid revocation. Okay, so we saw he must either say something to her, which was generally the, I'm going to point in a moment, weekday practice, or he could do something different on weekday, but it could also, but clearly should be for Shabbat, where he has to do an action like giving her the food stuff or giving her the drink, okay, yeah. Telling her she must eat it or drink it and then also revoke it in his heart. 
this is based, no, this is based, this is a discussion in the Gemara. Doesn't give us a source, a, 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 a Torah source, okay? So let's see what happens, right? So he says, kiyem bilibo kiyem. If he say, if he uh, confirmed it in his heart, it's confirmed. He fair bilibo, a nomo fair. That if he, if he uh, revoked it in his heart, it is not considered a valid revocation. So that's what I'm saying. It either had to be clearly verbal revocation or an action, okay? And by doing the action, it is a shinui from the weekday, okay? And then he could revoke it in his heart. Kiyem en yechol hafer. If he confirmed it, he is not able to revoke. Hey, fair, if he revokes, en yechol kayem. He is not able to confirm. Okay? Katani. Now we'll teach the following. Shehashtika mikayemet. This seems to tell us, therefore, that silence is a method of confirmation, at least implicit. Okay? My love to so take amanat mekat. But aren't we talking about a situation? where it would appear that he was silent for the purpose of annoying or distressing her? Lo, no, Sister Gemara. take amanat l'kayem. No, we're talking about a situation where he was silent in order to uh, make, confirm her vow. Yeah, but even if he misunderstood the vow in his heart, he said this, I'm going to realize it later that he misunderstood it. You're going to say that? Okay, let's let me change your question a little bit. Okay, if he confirmed it in his heart, how can he have misunderstood it? Because he didn't realize what she really said. He had only part of it. He didn't teach deeper. So let him go ask him. What did you say? Did you make a vow regarding such and such? Okay. He could have said, I thought she meant this, and it was really something different. So now what do you That's why I said, let him ask her. That's the <laughs> point. So what did you say? He asked her, what did you say? He didn't ask. He said the same believer in his heart. It's confirmed. No, but if he's not sure, that's he when. Say that. Doesn't matter. If he's not sure, okay? If he's not sure, he should ask first before even being Mekayim believer. Right. Okay, so what if, what if he is sure, but he made the wrong conclusion? Oh, that's Too a different bad. issue. Too bad. Learn. Can't change his Can't mind. change his mind. That's it. Okay. So what happens? So well, that's another whole issue. Okay. All right. That's another whole issue. Depending on what her vow was, he may have to divorce her. And because he could then the vow goes no. exactly. Right? Okay. So what happens? I knew. So the Gemara says, I'm on the top right now, so I don't know. Okay, tell me. All right? Lo, Mishotek, Amunat the Kayim. We say that's in regards to situation where he was silent in order to confirm. Hainu, isn't that the same as Kiyem Bilibo? That he's confirming it in his heart. Kiyem, that is considered confirmation. Ela, Mishotek, Stam. Now, maybe we're talking about a situation where he was simply silent and we do not know for sure what his in intention was. We don't know for sure whether he was being silent as implicit confirmation or he was being silent because he was considering, I don't know what to do. What did she really mean? What was the intent of her vow? Okay. Okay. So what happens? So the Gemara goes on. Ashkechan chomer behekem mi behefer. We, I have found, says the Gemara, the stringency regarding. So we're not. So why is this plugged in? Why is what plugged in? Okay, okay. Uh, Harvey, can you mute mute yourself, please? If unless you have a question, okay. Thank you. All right, Ashkechan Chomer Behekeme Behefera. I found 
the stringency regarding the confirmation of a vow more than revocation. However, the Gemara is going to ask, Behefer, mi behekem, mi nalan? Or can, what about the possibility that the Gemara said earlier that there are situations where revocation is more stringent than confirmation? Where is a source for that? What basis is there? Amar Rabbi Yochanan, says Rabbi Yochanan, Nishalin al haikem, ve'en Nishalin al hahafem. That it's possible, says Rabbi Yochanan, to make a request of a sage or a based in of three, had you told, okay, regarding the confirmation, but it's not possible to request on a revocation. Okay, remember, we did not realize this. We kept saying up to this point that maybe if he revoked, okay, and they have to want to redo it, she can go back to the sage. This she is, can't. She can't yeah. reform it. All right, so that's the point. That's part of it. She can, she can he can. He could. So what happens? She can make another letter. Right. Let's see what happens. Nishalin, so the Gemara goes on, Metiv Rav Kahana. So Rav Kahana is challenging the statement of Rabbi Yochanan, okay? Namely, im hecharish yacharish la isha v'gomer. We had a Mishnah that taught us if he's silent, double language there, by the way, okay? Regarding his wife, etc. cetera. amanat l'mekat ha'katuv medaber. Maybe that pasuk is giving us an answer to a situation when he's quiet in order to uh, annoy the wife. All right, that's what it's talking about. So the Gemara responds, Ata omer take almanat l'mekat. You're saying that from that pasuk, the double language of silence, okay, is telling us it might deal with the situation of silence for annoying her. Oh, a no ella take almanat l'kayem. Or maybe that pasuk is the basis for telling us that he's silent and for the purpose of giving an implicit confirmation. Shehu Omer, but when the Pasuk says to us, Ki hecharish la, okay, that when he is silent regarding her, hare, it's a different Pasuk, right? It's a different Pasuk. Hare, Bishotek Almanat Lekayem Hakatub Medaber. There, that Pasuk with the single Lashon of hecharish, okay, clearly tells us that he is silent for the purpose of. Implicit confirmation. Ha ma'ani mikayem. How then do I maintain and understand the pasuk with the double lashon im hecharish hecharish la isha? How do I understand that? B'shotek amanat lemekat hakatuv medaber. Okay, that therefore that comes to tell us it's a situation where he's silent for the purpose of annoying her. And therefore, Tiyufta, this is a refutation to Rabbi Hanina, okay, from earlier. Now, the Gemara is going to come and give us uh, other examples as we continue on further refutations of Rabbi Hanina's statement. Velokeha. So let us phrase it this in the following manner. Bishotek almanat lekayim labriyut. Okay, when we're saying that he's silent for the purpose to confirm, ha bishotek stam. That's a situation where he's simply silent. Okay, karai yatire kative. We have multiple psukim here that deal with this issue. Meiti Rava. and so Rava then responds with the following challenge. Nadra im chashecha. What about the fact that we have a Mishnah that tells us that if she made the vow with the approach of darkness, okay, and this was Erev Shabbos, may far la ad he may revoke it until the time that it is truly dark. She'im lo hafer v'chashcha, 
because if he did not revoke it and it became darkness, he is not able to revoke it. Am I, under what circumstances? It, right? it could be a situation where he's silent for the purpose of annoying or distressing her. Tiyuvta, indeed again, this also could be a proof text against Rabbi Hanina's statement. Okay? Further example, Metiv Rav Ashi, says Rav Ashi the following, Yodeya Ani, Sheyesh Nedarim, perhaps the father, the, I'm sorry, the husband, perhaps the, when the husband, I'm gonna suggest, is silent. This is what he's thinking. This is ties in with Sid's question about maybe it's unclear to him, okay? What is he thinking? He's not hard. Well, he could be, I don't know. He has to be, read you, Okay. Yodeya ani sheyesh nedarim, aval eni yodeya sheyesh mafirim. I know that there is such a thing as vows, but I'm not familiar with the way of revocation. Yeah, yafer, okay. He could still perhaps revoke. And even though the day is up. Yodeya ani sheyesh mefirim. Or perhaps he's thinking, I know one has the capability of revoking. Aval eni yodeya shezen But I don't know for sure if what she said was an actual valid vow. Okay? Rabbi Meir Omer, were that the case? The second oh. example, or both of them. I like the second one better, but okay. Rabbi Meir says, <coughs> Lo ye fair, he cannot revoke. The Chachamim Omrim ye fair, but the sages disagree and say he can revoke. Va amai, and why is that the case? He says, La havui keshoteka banat lamekat tiyufta. Because that then could be a situation where he's silent for the purpose of annoying or distressing her. And that is a proof text. Okay, another proof text. Okay, so our question really was, why does, why does the silence, according to Rabbi Meir, imply confirmation? Okay, that seemed to be the case. Okay, that it was the question of whether he was aware of the type of vow. Okay, Hadrana Lach Nara Urasa. Okay, now we're going to get to a new parak or the new Mishnah. And we're going to discuss. Since we've been, yes, Alan. I just wanted to point out, we, a few weeks ago, we learned that a nether could be made with other words, that with substitute words. Right. And, so this person may not realize that what she said was actually a valid letter. That's what I think that's what they're saying here. Could be an interesting concept. In other words, normally we saw that somebody might say co-name, et cetera, et cetera. You're suggesting. Right. Okay. But and she if she said some words, other phraseology. He may not have realized that she actually made a letter, so he didn't he wasn't That could it. be. Good point, Alan. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Iran. All right. Iran says yeah you can't um, husband can't revoke every nether right so this, why he can only revoke mm -hmm. we're going to we're gonna get to that mission. that's what we're going to so get to. <laughs> what the situation here is the husband goes to a chacha and said i did not realize that what my wife's nether was in the category of revocable nedorim and that's why I remain silent. So the Chacham gives him Rishos to be a Mayfair, even though the day deadline is over. Okay, okay. That's the Quran. That's good. Thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> okay, I want to point out real quickly and then we'll move along. Okay, we keep saying that the husband can revoke certain vows, right? or even the, the father, but I want to focus on the, the husband here, okay? Where does he have the right to, in quotes, to revoke? Under what circumstances does the Mishnah want to 
have us examine. We have already seen some time back a suggestion in the Gemara that it has to do with the relationship mm -hmm. between the husband and the wife. Do we call that self-affliction or not? Okay, that's where we're going to be headed now. So the Mishnah starts off, new Mishnah. Ve'elu nedarim shahu fair. Okay, these are the vows for which I'm going to emphasize the husband, but we could put in the father here too. Okay, may revoke. First of all, devarim sheyesh bahem inui nefesh. Those items that have self-affliction. Okay, now what do we mean by self-affliction? Is that based on a pasuk? Okay, that's going to be one of our underlying questions, right? Im erchatz ve'im lo erchatz. If I wash or bathe or if I won't bathe. Im et kashet ve'im lo et kashet. If I adorn myself or if I don't adorn myself. Okay, as we go on to the next Amr. Amar Rabbi Yossi, says Rabbi Yossi. Ein elu nidre inui nefesh. Rabbi Yossi does not consider these vows that have impact of self-affliction, and therefore he would say they cannot be revoked. Okay, these are vows that reflect a situation of self-affliction. Amra konem perot haolam alai. Okay, by make like a sacrifice that all fruits that grows. Grow, right is produce or is forbidden. That kind of a vow he is able to revoke. Another possibility, she might say, Perot Medina Zo Alai. Okay, like a vow, etc., sacrifices the, the produce of this location, this particular location state, the county, uh, uh, section of Israel, okay? But the Gemara was going to really tell us he cannot revoke that, okay? We got to read that into the Gemara here. He cannot revoke it. Why? Yavi lami medina acheret. He can bring her produce from, from other location. Another example. Perot chenvani alai. The produce associated with the such and such a shopkeeper, okay, uh, is forbidden for me. Again, we have to read in. He cannot revoke that kind of vow. Why? Okay. A no yechola hafer. He is not able to revoke it, right? V'im lo hayta parnasato elamimenu. But, says the Gemara, Okay, or actually it's still the mission. If his sustenance is relied upon by that shopkeeper, has, in other words, he ha, that shopkeeper keeps his running tab and says to him, okay, okay that, that basically, you know, at the end of the month, you'll pay me instead of every week kind of thing. However, right? Mimenu, haray zeyefer. Then that case, he may uh, revoke the vow. Divrei Rabbi Yossi. Those are the statements of Rabbi Yossi. New Gemara. Now, our Gemara picks up. We were talking about self-affliction. Nidre inui nefesh hudamei fair. Our ratio of our Mishnah started off by telling us that vows regarding self-affliction can be revoked. Does that seem to imply that vows that have no relation to self-affliction, the husband cannot revoke whatsoever? But we've been taught elsewhere in a brighter. Between the husband and his wife, between a father and his daughter. Okay, 
What does that seem to be telling us there? Right? Milamed shahabaal me fair nidarim shebeino lebeina. That brightness seems to be telling us that a husband may revoke vows between himself and her. Okay? Okay. Now, I want to raise that as a question. Does that mean that it's only vows that affect their relationship? Or does it mean vows in general? Okay? All right? The Gemara is going to try to clarify that. Okay? Amre, halin vahalin may fair. Maybe I might say that both these and these he is able to revoke. Okay? In other words, both Inui Nefesh and those that are non Inui Nefesh he may revoke. But, there's a big but the Gemara is going to tell us that there's going to be a difference between them. Okay? Right? Mihu Inui Nefesh. May fare the olam, but those where there is a an issue of affliction between the two of them, and it affects their relationship. Okay, there he can revoke. Yeah, me who inu between them. This is inu in nefesh. Those with regards to self affliction affecting her. Okay, only. well, and particularly, okay, may fare the olam. Okay, he can revoke permanent. Can ongoing, about ain bahem inui nefesh. But if there is no situation of self affliction, kideita techuta havia hafara. So long as she is under his, I'm going to say, marriage authority. Okay, he has the ability to revoke. Mechi megareshla. But once he would divorce her, chayel alen medarim. Then that vow would be go into effect. We go, we go back into effect. All right. So the Gemara wants to come back. He can revoke it temporarily, and it just stays in the. In the if she says, if she says, "I'll never bathe again," he right. revokes that. That's permanent. That's in that fish. If she says, "I'll never," your favorite dish is scrambled eggs. I'll never scramble eggs for you. He says, I may, I may for that matter. Okay. Then seven years later, he divorces her. Then it takes At that again. moment, she can, has to stop making scrambled Scramble eggs for the rest of her life. That, what? No. no. Well, all right. I take away the point. Okay. That's the point. So in other words, his revocation, according to this statement, is under, while he's she is under his marriage mm -hmm. authority. The husband. Because when they're married, and, and that right. affects him. Get, under, is she still under his, uh, no. no. Once he gives her, once he divorces her, because she is no longer right. under his marriage authority. Right. She made the vow and it no longer And it goes back. and So it's not a revocable right. vow. Right. What's the difference between her and her? Yeah, she has a free will. I'm not sure if that's the difference the, the between Hafara and that it's invalid vow, but it affects him. So yeah. he has the right to be made there. Right. But yeah. if at some point it stops, it stops affecting him, it he does, dies or he divorces right. her. He, it no then longer it becomes, is, then no longer affects no longer him, applies. So it's still a valid being made there, he took her to a and he was That's a whole no, different no, story. That's a different right. story. Okay. All right, let's go on. Okay, what about situations where it's between him and her, but there is no self affliction? But when there is a situation of self affliction, in that situation, that vow then will never take effect even after he were to divorce her, okay? So the Gemara picks up and continues. Udvarim she'ein bahem inui nefesh. And those things when there is no uh, self-affliction. Ki reishla, when he divorces her. Chayla ala, do we say those then do go into effect again? Ha vahatnan, 
But here we're taught the following Mishnah. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri Omer, he says, Yefer Shema Yigarshena Utehei Asuralo. Maybe he should nevertheless revoke the vow because were he to divorce her, he would never then be able to take her back. Okay. If it could, if it, if, if it, if it, if the vow takes it, re, re becomes effective again and it affects him. Alma, therefore, ki la, when he divorces her, ume fair la meikara, he should revoke it actually initially, right? Havya hafara, and then it would be a valid revocation. Amre. But I might say as follows, halin vahalin, havya hafara, that both in this case and in this case, they're both revocations. Ella, but rather new explanation for the Gemara, nidre inui nefesh mefer, bain la'atzmo, bain la'acherim, that any vows that are uh, recognizing self-affliction, okay, regardless of whether it applies to him or applies to others, okay? That's one case. Ein bohemi nui nefesh, if there are no self-affliction, la'atzmo mefer, for himself, he can revoke. La'acherim ein no mefer. So if he remains, for the, the others, he can make <coughs> Okay, the others, it does not. It does not revoke. Vahachi katani. And this is how we need to teach it. Elun, in other words, this is almost a whole reworking of our language of our mission. The Elunidarim, Shahu may fair. These are the vows for which he, the husband, may revoke. Bain la atzmo, vain la achirim, whether it applies to himself or it applies, affects others. Nidarim, sheyesh badan inuin nefesh. Yesh behen. Okay, I've got a typo here, actually. I, it, the print in, would you believe it? It looks like a, it's in the oh, text, the it's a dollar. The no, this is the hey, yeah. Okay, yesh behen inuin nefesh. Those vows that have self-affliction. Okay. All right, we go on now a little bit more. Remember the next part of gave the example, okay, of what she might say, uh, whether I'll bathe or I won't bathe. Okay, if I bathe. How is it possible to say this? Were she to say really a statement of a vow, for example, konem perot olam, Okay, that I make a vow like a sacrifice that produce, okay, is uh, forbidden to me. Were I to wash, okay, all the produce. All right. Lama la hafara. Why does he need to uh, revoke the vow? Okay. The Kumara says, Lo tirchats, lo lit sarats. Perot alam, <laughs> let her not bathe. Ever again. <laughs> okay, and uh, the vow won't be effective. Right, and then the vow won't fall, go into effectiveness. <laughs> and then she won't be prohibited with the produce regarding her. Va'od, and furthermore, Baha Lema Rabbi Yossi. In this case, Rabbi Yossi would say to us as follows, Ein elu nidre inui nefesh. Aren't this, isn't this an example of some vow that's self-affliction? Isn't it not a vow of self-affliction? Dilma rachza ve'itzaru perot olam ala. Maybe she might wash and then the produce of any kind will be for, prohibited for her. It's not okay. theoretical because tomorrow she'll be Right. So tomorrow we'll pick up Okay, Michael will pick up tomorrow. All right, and continue on Amud Pei. All right. Okay, everybody have a good day. Thank you.
It's like work once. That's the end of it. Why would get the deadlift, huh? Right? You get the deadlift tomorrow. Well, he has to give me the deadlift. You're going to be here tomorrow? I'll be here. Oh, the new one comes out today. What? The, the bulletin comes, comes out, today. out today. Yeah, but the new one only starts Sunday. That's why I always have problems. Yeah, I pick up a and I miss whoever was dead on Friday. Okay, so long. Take care.